bit of the floor. Um, from where I sat, I thought the we had a really nicely diverse program. Um, Rashan, what what was your kind of view on the the whole scheduling the program? Did it fit together appropriately for you? Did it actually address the needs of your local researchers? Um, and did it encourage more people from Sri Lanka to actually come to the APAN meeting? Thank you very much, Andrew. And yes, in fact, uh, we have put together a good program thanks to the program committee. And uh, uh, there were many new activities. And also we had uh, local engagements as well. For instance, some working groups I noticed, they have found the right uh, local engagement, local connections and brought them. Uh, that was really good. And we also like uh, sort of complemented it. So we uh -huh. added, uh, for example, if we take the open uh, data, uh, the there was a, the working group has put some people from Sri Lanka. Then we noticed it and we also found some more people and put it in. So we sponsored. And so that's an example. So uh, we see that there are a lot of engagement and even local. Uh, we did a lot of uh, promotion um, in the low, our, our community. And... Uh, we see a lot of engagement and people coming and they're appreciating as well. Uh, just now I, I, I got delayed because there are people coming and telling me, okay, this was, wow, this is a lot of work. And, and mostly vice chancellors and uh, administrative level people from universities, they were coming and telling those. So um, they said like, okay, they know what Learn is doing locally, but they don't know what's happening globally. Now they know. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, very good. So, okay. Thanks very much. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mike is off the other. Um, you also really went above and beyond in terms of just adding so many extra things that we hadn't asked you to, but were absolutely amazing in terms of the yeah, you know, the engagement. Um the conference was kind of the you know, the first time we've given this a try. Um, how do you think that's actually, has that been successful? Has that brought more diverse people into the audience? Yeah, um, definitely, yes. And uh, I also noticed when I was walking in, we gave a library for the conference parallel session and they don't have enough space there. Excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. I, I mean, I heard it. Okay. So they were complaining to me, oh, not enough space. I was happy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> not enough space. That's good. So that uh, room had enough space, we thought, but uh, there's more more than what we expected. And also we identified some researchers who are interested in uh, AI HPC work and uh, we invited them to come. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave them, so in fact, like learn from uh, like a funding perspective, supported about 50 people. Uh, so they are, they, are, they are not paying, they're just joining us. Okay. So we have allocated fund for that year. Cool. So that's really it. Uh, yeah, so that uh, worked pretty well, actually. And uh, we also put together a lot of people together in that process. Uh, yeah. Different researchers from different places within the country, outside, all that together. That is what I mentioned. You were not here in the council meeting yesterday. Uh, what I proposed is we should continue this. Okay. Uh, even next, maybe every six months is too much, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. So I proposed we will continue it uh, every August one, the second one, uh, uh, so even the next one, I, I'm happy to work with the next August, next August uh, local organizing committee on how it can be done. Uh, the conference part I'm talking about here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think um, another thing, another one, one of the important things about the conference is that uh, uh, so far, um, uh, APAN is is a coming together of similar minded and you know people who are actually service providers and in looking at the service side. Uh, what who are we are who we are getting for the conference are mainly our, the customers who have no idea what's going on behind the scenes and how. So I think that bringing that together is also one of the you know, the objectives of the conference. So that you know, because up to now, not many people knew even about learn. 
Like even though they know what learn is because of Zoom, they got to know what, what learn is. Uh, and even like the state minister today, like, you know, even though he's in charge of us and, you know, now he's like very interested and he came because of the conference. He We invited him for the meeting and opening. He was like not that interested, but he came for the conference of AI and all that. So getting him to un and come and understand and, and the scope of these things, because one of the main um, um, objectives of bringing a pan here and also like with our new sessions that we are having is to to influence the policymakers, especially in the emerging environments, to understand the importance and the scope of this. So uh, I think bringing the academics uh, also into the picture, and we had the vice chancellor uh, today, and you know, so like bringing those people in to understand what is going behind the scenes and what is what is happening around the world is actually, I think, would be very, very good uh, moving forward. I think the IOIH, uh... Yeah, you know, HPC AI theme seems to be fairly, you know, a hot topic for a lot of people at the moment. Um, there are three specific HPC conferences around the world: uh, ISC, SC, and Supercomputing Asia. Do you think we would be beneficial if we had APAN representation at those conferences? In that, you know, many of us wear kind of multiple hats across different disciplines. Um, and many of us actually have stands and booths at those conferences. Should we be looking at having some APAN marketing material, you know, on a, you know, either on a screen or printed material that kind of encourages people from that community to cross over into the APAN community? So if you are talking about the future, I'm not very clear whether we are going to go with the theme in the future. So because the theme we came up with, I thought it's just for one. Uh, next time we might have to figure out another theme. That's what I thought. But maybe it's the same theme because it's a, it's a hot topic now and hopefully it's in a year. So we can keep the same theme, but I didn't think about it. Uh, but if you are keeping the same theme, definitely yes. What are other people's thinking in terms of, you know, the, the theming for the conference? Um, I kind of think we could do AI HPC for another couple of years, you know, going from the, the foundation meeting in Nepal to, you know, here's practical ways that you can actually use these technologies, um, you know, particularly the large language models like ChatGPT that could be really applicable for many in our community. So, Andrew, I found the theme that the, the um, AI seemed to be exciting. And that's one of the reasons I'm here today instead of out touring around um, Sri Lanka uh, because I really get into this stuff. And obviously Australia is involved, everyone's involved in this AI stuff, so it's, it's super important. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really worked well as a, an extension to the uh, the conference, uh, to the workshops. The only problem is that I'm here, I'm not over there watching it. But that's fine, I can look at that. I can watch it on uh, video later, but uh, yeah, it was really interesting, some of the stuff that I did here. Um, that's a kind of a nice, uh, and, and feel free to jump back to the this conversation thread, but I think that's kind of a nice segue to um, Jamie, um, how, you know, you, you've done an amazing job on wrangling all the technology for the last couple of meetings. You've been running around from room to room to room How's your conference experience been as a delegate, as well as wrangling all the technology, wrangling all the people? Um, yeah, it, I, I can't compliment you enough on that, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it, is, it is difficult to separate the hats because I obviously see all the technical glitches and it's hard for me to completely take off my tc chair hat and be a delegate and go you know is, is it working but i i think overall as delegates everything is running smoothly mm -hmm. and and that's that's the key thing is trying to uh hide disguise or decrease the problems seen by delegates and and that's the role of the technical side all the volunteers all of the local organizing committee that are putting in the efforts for it. Um, probably the only thing that I've made note on for improvements for future ones is making sure 
that we are giving our remote participants a first class experience. Uh, especially if we are charging money for remote participants, we want to make sure that they are getting interaction two ways, that they are getting the full experience as much as possible remotely that the in-person delegates are getting. Um, so I've, I've made some notes for improvements, uh, dedicating tasks for volunteers and uh, organizing committee for the future one. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the only uh, extension, uh, you know, for for improvements that I'm seeing. We're uh, we've gotten to a pretty pretty good position. Uh, the the last APAN meeting, improving to this one and the running and everything. I think it's uh, it's been going quite well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the next meeting, and you know the the small incremental improvements that we can be making on there. The other side from the technical review is that uh, we have finished our uh, paid contract with Hoover. So now it's the matter of doing a review of other conference management software that's out there uh, and doing it relatively quickly. Because if we are going to change, there will be a little bit of a, a learning ramp up period for new software and making sure that it's going the right way. Uh, as a fallback, we can always last minute pay, renew, and, and continue with Hoover. So uh, that's probably the only big change between 56 and 57 is doing that uh, large review. We're also looking at um, uh, purchasing of additional equipment uh, from APAN's perspective to make it easier on the local organizing committees by having hardware that can continue from one meeting to the next mm -hmm. and doesn't require rental from a professional AV company uh, each time. So there, there's some of those small changes as well. Um, but yeah, the conference management software is probably the biggest review and possible change to the next meeting. So, you know, in terms of that uh, remote delegation, oh yeah, having a remote delegate representative kind of there to ask those questions, monitor the, the Zoom, yeah, be the one who puts the hand up so that the the remote audience actually gets the feeling that there is somebody there, yeah, that they're virtually there. Um, Marcus next, and then um, anybody on uh, the remote Zoom. So just <clears throat> picking up on Jamie's point, saying, you know, we want to incrementally improve the experience of the remote participants. Um, I've had two people approach me saying, are we doing too good a job for the remote participants? so that we're actually not encouraging people enough to come and join the meetings. Um, because a large part of the benefit of an APAN meeting is this, people getting together. Um, I'm torn on that front, I have to be honest. Um, there, there's clearly benefits in being able to get um, key speakers to join sessions, even plenaries to some degree, uh, remotely, because they're not going to be engaged the whole week. I mean, Simon is incredibly unusual to be here the whole week. Um, but, you know, and obviously people like Douglas, who would normally be here the whole week missing out, um, that's, that's, that's okay too. But if we do that increasingly better, at what point do we not have a meeting? Um, and just something to highlight, I just noticed I've had, um, in my emails in the last couple of days, I've had two conferences, um, send me announcements about their upcoming meetings. Um, they offer hybrid modes. They charge a good amount for on-site attendance. They charge two-thirds the rate for virtual attendance. Not $50, right? E-Research Australasia, $750 Aussie dollars for a week, um, $500 for virtual. Looks like that's pretty steep, right? So oh, I thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> so so, so just, just to clarify, my previous statements were from the technical committee chair's point of view. From a technical perspective, I'm happy to implement whatever the larger organization and the, the program committee is, is wanting. Um, if we want to drop remote participation except for speakers, I am more than happy to go down that route as well. Um, one thing that I did suggest to the secretariat uh, earlier this week is it might be a good idea to do a survey of not just attendees of this meeting and not just in person and remote, but also people that have attended previous APAN meetings, but did not 
register for this one and to ask them questions. Why did you not attend? What can we do to get you to attend in person for the next day pan meeting? Because I, I fully recognize the benefit of in person. I hated COVID times and having to do anything remote as a presenter, as a trainer, as an attendee. And, and I much prefer the face to face. Um, so I, I, you know, building on the surveys to find out how we can get people to face to face. I think it is worth having those discussions. Like Marcus said, do we continue the remote? Uh, what do we do for pricing for it? Um, and how do we in general encourage people to attend face to face? So during remote, we've, we've gone from around 220 to over 1200. Um, that hasn't sustained after COVID's ended. Um, and I, I really like the idea. Should we, we, you know, should we be going back to those thousand people who have not seen the value of coming here and try to work out if it if it's an economic impact or if it's an interest impact that they don't see the value of the whole week? Um, does anyone else have any kind of thinking on this area? Yeah, but we will give some importance to the remote people. So you'll start with them first. Doug, uh, Douglas, you want? Douglas, did you have anything? Yep. So uh, I think that Marcus raises a good point. Um, you know, given the, uh, I, I guess I come down on the side of, I don't think, I think the people who want to go to APAN will go to APAN. If I, if I look at my experience over the last, or well, since 2016 of being involved in APAN, that most of us go to APAN because we like to go to APAN physically and we like to see the people who we like to see there, who we want to work with and so on. I think one of the things that we haven't done so well over the years, at least in my experience, is keep in touch with people who have been to APAN. And as you say, we had, you know, I mean, for example, when, when there is an APAN coming, do we get the names and addresses of everybody who attended the last five APANs and email them and tell them that APAN is going to be on and, you know, we'd love you to, to see you back? Or do we just expect that they will know that it's on? I mean, it's a bit like, I mean, all of us have some association or have had some association with universities. Universities spend millions on alumni. You know, I... I finished my university education in 1977, right? That's a long time ago. I still get emails from the University of Canterbury, you know, telling me, oh, here's an opportunity for you to donate some money to our university. That's like, you know, 40 years later or whatever. I'm sure you guys are in the same boat. I mean, you know, Andrew, you're in a university or associated with a university now. Um, Marcus is in the same boat. I know that others in the room are there. So I think that we should do more. I mean, we we fund our fellows. Do we track anything to do with those fellows over the years? Not that I've seen, but maybe we All should right. be doing it. <clears throat> we started something. Okay, um, so the idea of the fellowship alumni was to, um, number one is we have the database of APAN 55 and APAN 56, but to also go back um, in, in time when we started off the fellows to gather all of them together um, to share resources or to contribute resources. But what we had gathered from 55 and 56 fellows is they want to share their resources in terms of our website update. Uh, to be um, assigned to working groups to help them um, uh, arrange more activities um, to get like more in the field stories, right? So because there are some like content writers, designers um, to activate our social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, because our social media actually needs a lot of work as well. So they want to have like a, um, a page for APAN Fellowship Alumni. So they are able to post whatever that's happening within their community or let's say they're assigned to, they are part of a working group to get more activities going. So it's just post that, okay, we are having this today and so that people can just continue reposting it, tagging APAN. So it will always fall back to the main APAN page because um, we didn't want to give them um, the um, the admin rights on the main APAN social media. 
but through the fellowship alumni, they can actually just tag APE and it will automatically be posted. But of course, the content will have to be moderated first by us. Um, that is one. And then they wanted to also look into uh, things like um, papers that are presented during APE to actually put it somewhere. We used to have something called APE proceedings um, and that has disappeared. When we migrated, I don't even know where that content is now. So we can't even, um, I think Dr. Ling gave us a few, but that's not all of it. But the fellows have suggested to put it together like a magazine to to um, either do it like a once a year magazine, put in both the meetings together, or it can just be an e-magazine of, um, like Roshan said, and yesterday during the council meeting, a lot of them actually liked the book. So to at least have once a year, a, at least something physical, but um, to put it together, to give them like a nice touch um, of, of the papers that were presented, not on, not for it to look like an academic kind of paper, but it's more of what that whole research is about so that any layman can understand. That's one. Another one is database or subject matter experts, like what Andrew mentioned. So that was one of the suggestions. So they have a lot of um, um, good ideas. So some can be implemented short term, some are long term uh, processes. So the short term, we're going to put it together and then start engaging the fellows to get them done. So we'll run by the council and the committees uh, of, of the, all these ideas. So, to, one bit, one bit, uh, about, the, about the research paper, is not enough. That's the problem. Keep extended, extended, and not enough people submitted. And some of them, not good quality. Something like that. That's why it died down. But how? I don't know how to <laughs> encourage people to submit more paper. And then better. I don't know that. Um. So how did you? You know, you had to engage a, a publisher to actually have a conference. How did you go in terms of the paper collection and the publication? W was was that effective, or are we are you still kind of waiting to see the results on that? We it, uh, we engage with them, and they asked for a certain number of. We had a number of requirements. Uh, we believe we satisfied all of that. Okay. Uh, so therefore, we are going to submit the final version to them and they'll review it. Uh, what we hear from what, the engagement we had with them in other places, what we realize is it'll take a few cycles with us and them and it works, yeah. Okay. So we're going to get this published. But in terms of uh, more engagement, more papers, even what uh, the, the, the three conferences you mentioned, we had to yeah maybe have some... Uh, public uh, enough because like when when uh, we send out uh, to the community about ape and call for papers it's just the same old mindset they have they're not thinking about so even researchers like for example if the ape and uh, call for paper come to me i would have just archived it right uh, i would have not even read it because i know what call for papers for a pan is and it's nothing to do with what i'm normally doing from the research side right so uh, that is what it is so we had to make more uh, we had to do more promotions, yeah. Uh, Roger, had a comment. Uh, yes, actually, uh, my I agree with these uh, uh, engagements related things, right? So I think we need to increase the past attendees. So I think uh, for that, uh, maybe I think uh, we need to find uh, a likelihood of the participation. So maybe based on few uh, last uh, our meetings data, so we need to find that. And I think uh, we need to work on that. And uh, maybe for the engagement, so it may not be the case of all the countries, but maybe we can uh, offer a few uh, waive on the registration fee as well for the for for a random like that. So I think that may help the engage as well. And I think yeah, we need to find some other ways so that uh, we can increase the likelihood as well. I think yeah. So because uh, without uh, uh, more participations, then I need to think this right. Actually, I was just yep. going to echo the point um, I made yesterday in the council meeting uh, with Roshan's suggestion is that we have two audiences here. We have a very technical audience. We have a very academic audience. And so when we talk about a conference and proceedings, they mean different things to those two different audiences. Um, so an academic proceedings, publication, citation, all that sort of stuff, that's one type of conference. 
um, the TNC Internet 2 type events are a different kind of conference. And the proceedings there is pretty much just a summary of what, what happened. Yeah. Um, so it's it's good to have a bit of both, I think. Um, one thing I think, Roshan, we talked about yesterday was maybe alternating between the two or... Yeah, in, in, fact, in, in, in fact, even this time, although not to the full extent, but what we had done is we had this conference call for proposal, uh, papers, and we collected the papers, reviewed them, they are, and then selected 30%, like I mentioned. And then there were some topic paper uh, submissions, proposals coming from the uh, the other, like the call for proposal for the, for, for, for what did we call it? We call it call for presentation list. What did we call our yeah. proposals, right? Proposal. Yeah, call for proposals. So there were some sent, sent to us. Uh, we included them as well. So even this time in the conference venue, conference room, there are about 15 or so paper or 12 papers coming from the proper track and they are going to be published. And then we have about four papers coming from this track and they're going to be presented within the same themes because they match the same themes, but they are not going to be published because they were not reviewed. Okay. So both are happening this time, but, but uh, coming back to Marcus's point uh, about technical, uh, some technical track or uh, sort of usually in a, a academic conference, we have this uh, the research track and then the workshop or some tutorial, some other tracks, right? So that idea, by, what I said was we, we could do both. We could do both within the conference uh, uh, in addition to all the other interesting thing we do in the work, uh, working groups and meetings and all that. Within the conference, we can uh, do both. Even, uh, even what we were discussing uh, within the conference was uh, the paper submitted, some of them, if they are not like research, but then more application or more technical, we can just accept them and let them present, but they won't go into the uh, into the, the, the research publication, just like which I indexed and go to some yeah, archive and so on. Yeah, that we discussed, we, we can take it forward, yeah. So if you are, if you are going to continue with the conference uh, as alternate one, I think we have to start now. Right, so uh, we need to take a decision and decide on because then that call out for papers will actually go out very early. But with the experience we had now, you know, we like you know we can do it even in three four months. But you no, know, not really. But but if we can, if we start it now, targeting a pan fifty eight, uh, that's you know research conference or maybe we'll call it something like that. And we can if we can start now, we'll have enough time to get it reviewed and uh, work between the two events. Uh, okay. And any for, about the paper about the the call for paper? I think we we announced it after like in the APAN fifty five, and how many? How many? I would like to know. Submit. We received about forty four, forty three. Ah, okay. Okay, so that's we good. Normally, we, we can, if it's a one year cycle, we can keep as many extensions as possible and remind them or you know, and get more. Yeah, so if, if we have one year cycle, we have you like collected more. And also, like I said, uh, the community, when we circulate these things to the community, they don't see it. The, the right people, maybe they don't see it. Yeah. No, no. So that's part of the requirement. One of the requirements is these, uh, the from the publisher. We are calling it an international conference, and therefore, I think uh, on twenty percent, I can't remember the number. Uh, only twenty percent of the papers can be from one one country. So they had such, they had like twenty different conditions. We looked at each one of them, one institute. Okay, each institute you can't have this many and so on. So we looked at each one of them, and uh, when we are doing the review, when we are selecting papers, also we looked at each one of them and made sure they are all satisfied for now. Yeah. How else can I do it? <laughs> yeah, and the for the members. <laughs> uh, just uh, uh, I don't want to say the uh, another aspect. How to the improve the visibility between uh, over the research papers? Uh, it means uh, what about the interaction between the uh, normal the participant over the EPAN and the student or the researcher for that who submit the paper. Uh, you know, the in 
in TNC, old TNC, or at the Shippagami Conference and others, sometimes they, uh, their papers to uh, enhance the visibility, they are the poster and exhibit the, the papers mm. in some places. So everybody can, if you are interested in the, the papers, they can contact the, uh, the author with the papers. Yeah. So, but if in this moment, uh, normal our participants, they cannot see the, the, the papers if they cannot join the, the research the section. So that is, uh, if you are interested, you can try to this one is after. Uh, yeah. 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 Andrew, sorry. <laughs> I just realized I'm, I'm over here and my voice is coming out over there. You were looking the wrong way. <laughs> um, the, the discussion about preparing now for APAN 58 is a really good one um, for the conference part. It actually highlights another thing we have an issue with is how long it takes us to get our program up. Um, so I'll, again, I'll reference eResearch Australasia just today published their program for their event in two months' time. Yep. The whole detailed program, all the speakers, all the sessions, all the keynotes. Um, I think what we need to think about doing is to start calling for proposals before the prior meeting. So at the moment, we basically wait, you know, we're going to wait till 56 is over and the day after we can make the announcement because call for proposals for 57. Yeah. Um, maybe as a habit, we should think about doing it three months ago. Get, getting, of course, people like Francis to actually submit something is another problem. And, and being one of the guilty parties on that myself. Um, yeah. But also you, you create the confusion if you do it before um, because you're looking at how late our, our friends <laughs> submit, you know, they, they would be, for them to plan for the next one, it, it, it's going to be a bit difficult. It, it, it's unlike res, uh, conference research where you, you need the lead time and then, okay, I got my paper accepted. Then I'll, I'll plan plan to go. But certainly the um, uh, program needs to be, I don't know what incentive we can do to encourage people to finish their program. Maybe you give $100 to to the, to the each session that the, APAN is very rich. <laughs> you know, I, I it. I mean, we chase. I, I was chasing as well, and then a bit lucky that most of them did come in, uh, and say yes. But um, but it, it wasn't as early as I wanted it to to be, and we sent a lot of chases uh, to try and get the confirmation. Yeah. I, I totally take the point about the confusion potentially. One thing we could do, and I'll, I'll, whoops, did I just turn? No, it didn't. So I'll just yell at Ileana and Sean at the moment um, about potentially having the structure of the program be developed at the previous meeting. Because at this session here, we've got a bunch of working group chairs who will know that they want to have a session at APAN 57. They could answer that question right now. And we've got, half the program structure already there. Great minds think alike, Marcus, because yeah. I was just about to raise that. And, yeah, you know, if we do the carrot and stick, if we basically block in the active working groups kind of roughly, you know, we can always adjust the timing and dates. But that gives people a motivation that they're going to look embarrassed if they don't actually fill up their program um, or if we could be cancelled on it. Um, that may be a, a way to kind of, you know, okay. drive people to be a bit more proactive in terms of getting those, those programs in place and getting the speakers in place. And and it also kind of goes to, you know, the attraction of particular speakers. If if we know in advance there will be networking, you know, network engineering is a, a given. We're a networking organisation. <laughs> well, I, I would hope so in in some way or form. Yeah, even though APAN has evolved from a collection of NRENs discussing how we put the international links together, now supporting a whole lot of the applications which actually use those networks. And, you know, that is the whole purpose of building these networks is to show the value and application that we can actually deliver. 
Um, if I could just also jump back to Douglas's point, um, I also think we are missing a big opportunity for kind of the whole alumni engagement. Um, our universities are always going out and asking people to, you know, submit foundations and bursaries and, yeah, I think we're losing an opportunity on that for some of our longer-term APAN members who, um, you know, for example, Lawrence had been with us for a, a very long time. We may be able to honour some of those people by you know, having a foundation or some way of you know, you know, ha just remembering them. Um, also on the fellows, I think it would be a really great idea if we track the fellows over their careers as well. So you know, they first appeared at APAN, they become the vice chancellor of the university 30 years later. Um, that also gives kind of the aspirational drive about what the value of actually participating and networking in this community really is. Yeah, and and if I could just uh, follow up, um, Andrew, I guess that's where I was going in my reply to Marcus's original question about, you know, whether we want to go with a low price to attract more people um, Marcus, when you use the example of e-research Australasia and you say, well, they're charging two thirds of the price of the on-site cost, that that might be the case with e-research Australasia. I'm not sure that the sort of people who are going to e-research Australasia are the type of people that are necessarily coming to an APAM meeting and that would therefore justify that sort of price. But that's a matter for another discussion. But but personally, I think that there's it, it, there's probably a lot of people who would like to come but can't come for various reasons. I mean, we've got people who are in developing countries, you know, getting to, especially with airfares and costs of hotels at the moment, possibly getting from, you know, Laos or Vietnam or whatever to Sri Lanka or Bangkok or, you know, Dakar is going to be an expensive operation. So I guess my, my gut feeling is to try and keep the price lower for external people and try and get more of them and try and get more of them by following up with the people who've been to APAN in the past. Thanks, Douglas. Um, Marcus has just kind of prompted me that we're, we're kind of rolling, coming a little out of t up to time. Um, does anyone else have anything program related at the moment? Uh, just quickly about the engagement where we started uh, whether the in the in the room engagement Jamie's point I think the one of the problems is not just about uh, it's not about it's not a technological problem actually. it's a people problem uh, say for even now whether we can engage so I see some sessions like uh, what we uh, Taurit did yesterday a lot of online engagement so and also obviously when the when the working group is mostly online uh, oriented, that's enough and more online engagement. So it's just uh, the, the we also maybe had to figure out a way to educate the session chairs and those who are running the session on how. So maybe we had to have a small guideline. Say okay, this is a hybrid meeting, run it like this. So there will be online participants. They might raise hand or even try to engage with them. Just a word, right? So just to say engage with them. So such thing can help, I, I believe, like just small uh, hints uh, will help, uh, I, I believe. And about the payments, uh, because we mentioned about a payment. In fact, like this time, we also had a conference uh, uh, online participation and I, we kept it free. And I noticed even the APAN meeting online participate and come registering through that. And we let it as it is. So uh, the total paid meeting participation this online this time have reduced compared to last time but because we had another like a conference participation for two days you can come free and they register through that and they are coming every day that's okay i mean in fact like originally i was talking to them i was suggesting let's keep it free that is what i was suggesting but then there were different discussions and i didn't work out yeah i, I had okay. some pushback on that price as well um liana could i perhaps hand over to you on um event, sorry Therit. Go for it, Therese. Okay, I have only three points to focus on. 
I think speakers should not be allowed online. Audience can be there because if speakers are there online, they are not properly audible and actually the audience lose their interest. So that is my personal comment. The second thing is, can we create attachment of the industry for sponsorship purpose? Because we all use many different products of uh, many OEMs like Cisco, Juniper, HP, Dell, but I don't see that much attachment only this time. Probably Roshan could manage someone from Nokia, although Nokia is, I believe, a little bit far away from the Enron industry. More closer is Cisco, more closer is Juniper and Dell, HP, but I don't know. Probably it is as part of the community, it is also my failure that why we cannot make attachment of the industry. And the third one, I don't know whether it is the right platform as ISOC is actually they are sponsoring each and every event. Can we think of creating a new working group on internet governance? So I don't know whether this is the right platform, but I think we can do it. Internet governance is very important nowadays. So we can think of it and ISOC will promote this idea. I'm damn sure about it. Thank you. So yeah, we, we had some internet governance session. Yes, I was yeah. Continue, make make it a working group. Start from step by step. Oh, to, yeah. Yeah, so make make it above. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. You did, right? Yeah, so do box and then the working group. Just do it. Uh, about industry engagement, I, we did like an industry forum. Uh, this is just to, because like I met Nokia in TNC and then uh, the I met the, the, she is like the global head for Enred activities. So I, so she's working in the Europe and the US. So I thought bring her here. Uh, I was trying to get some money for the sponsorship. That didn't work. At least I got to registration. Right. <laughs> And having spoken to them, I think they really got a, a, a significant benefit that they didn't know this market existed. Yeah. Um, and now to, to Ritz's point, yeah, collectively we spend hundreds of millions of dollars with these companies. Bringing them to the community, even if we you know, specifically invite them so that they come along, they then see the value of, of sponsorship um, driven by the somebody in the company rather than us going to our local rep who then needs to go up the chain and explain what this, what the value of this nebulous APAN thing is. So I think that would be really great to have more industry participation. Um, it also gives them the chance to sell to us um, and to you know, reach the CEOs of various NRNs who they may not direct have direct access to. Um, and it also lets all of us keep them honest by exchanging the sort of offers they're giving us to make sure that we're we're keeping the price good for all of our community. Yeah, if I can recollect, I got a healthy amount of. If I can recollect, I got a healthy amount of uh, sponsorship from Cisco, HP, and Dell during upon fifty three. So I don't know why it doesn't become a regular sponsorship like ISOC or Asia Connect. It should be. And I, I think we need to really work hard on on getting that, make, making sure that there's that regularity. Yeah, Andrew. So that's that's one of the things actually we wanted to kind of propose late uh, after this one. So because we we had a hard time, as you can remember, in the PC committee me PC meetings um, uh, about the sponsorship. So uh, what we wanted to propose is that you know if we can, as you know, Tauris is saying, um, if we can set up a, 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 a like a um, a committee or a group within APAN uh, so that, you know, we can do the industry relations and, and talk with them very early and, and set up the calendar. So for us, the issue was that we started very late 
and uh, by the time we identified the potential sponsors and all that it was quite late for their cycles as well if we can keep the engagement with the industry and uh, if if within with as as apac not not as like local hosts uh, local hosts can come in they can work with the local sponsors and others but if you can if we can actually set up a system where we plan long term so that we know who's going to sponsor what and all that so that then and and that will help the not only the local host but you know it can actually bring down the registration costs as well because we know what is available so that major, major burdens of the local host will go down they only have to worry about the arrangements and that meetings not to worry about the monetary side of it could i impose on you to yeah. start yeah. chairing that committee please yeah <laughs> yeah, we will we'll discuss that and then we can go forward. Okay. Uh, anything else on the program before uh, one more question? Yeah, actually, regarding these, these sponsors, so it's a really top tracks for all the local organizers. And uh, uh, thanks for other uh, entrants. Actually, uh, it's, it's a community, so that is uh, helpful. Uh, based on my experiences, uh, I don't know how so far uh, how we uh, have improved ourselves. Actually, we are very weak uh, uh, with uh, past APAN data. So because the sponsors, their first questions will be obviously the data. So they definitely want to see their business and uh, future expansions as well because we already have 56 meetings. So whatever possible, so I think we need to have very strong sponsorship documentations based on the impact that APAN has uh, provided in the regions and maybe at the, at the global scales as well, right? So I think that is a very important. So otherwise, so local organizers, uh, every, each and every time they have to deal with. So if the local organizers and if the countries, they have the very good connections with uh, these uh, uh, these IT uh, companies and peoples, then uh, it will not be difficult for them to find some uh, fundings. But uh, in other cases, so it's really difficult. And I think that is the one. So. Uh, documentation parts and the, uh, another is uh, we need to mobilize the full app and resources uh, to have a strong because we already have a very strong linkages but uh, that is not yet materialized at the at the higher level as well i think yeah thanks uh, the app and uh, sec to prepare sort of with the, the, those i engage with almost every one of these uh companies i asked everyone I didn't leave anyone out, but all of them, uh, not just a single engagement, I keep on asking, they ask questions, I replied, I got data from them and so on. But, but can we ask the SEC to prepare a report, like a, 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 a summary report on in terms of the major activities that happen and also particularly about participants. That is what the industries are, companies are interested about. Participants, where are they from? What are they doing? Are they CEOs? So are they engineers? Are they policymakers? That sort of information, if there's two or three graphs with some numbers, uh, that will really help for finding sponsors. Yeah. Fortunately, we ha I have prepared that. And uh, thank you. I've done the breakdown for the last five APANs. So we've, we've got the nice demographics in right. terms of uh, country representation, in terms of numbers, and in terms of which. I, I, which... Didn't, I didn't get access to it. it, it... Ah, right now. Okay, hopefully useful for you <laughs> uh that, that was kind of one of the age Re connect requirements because they also wanted to know that um also it would be really great if we were getting more detailed demographic breakdown um we sometimes capture gender um we don't particularly capture career level in detail like we can yeah you, know, you can derive it but Maybe we can expand some of the registration to to capture that just the additional statistics that we need. Can we prepare the volume of market they have, like last five years data? Can we do that? We don't need to share for each and every entrant, but we can give them an idea that you have such volume of market over here. 
Well, we're I talking, think yeah, yeah, we're talking that about will it. work better, but I don't know how many entrants will be uh, are ready to disclose that data. No, no, volume of market. I mean, you have mentioned that you have purchased 250K amount of servers. No, no. no. I think to, to be honest, uh, yes, it mentioned it's uh, what's the business uh, ratio rate or importance of the online uh, in the old uh, network uh, industry. Uh, do you remember in the coming and all these uh, uh, years, uh, there was a PTC meetings over there in Hawaii? Uh, in that time, uh, RNA network was uh, appeared at one of the PTC meeting. The reason why, uh, the ratio, the pH ratio of the RNA, it means who uh, leads in the sub mining carriers in the over the world. The ratio is uh, just uh, starting from the 1% to the, the 5. That is, uh, yes, in, in Korea also, what's the pH ratio? It means uh, related to the uh, network equipment or the earth service, this is uh, under the one of five the below. This is our situation. So I think if the, some years we are discussed, uh, what about in the, to respond to the industry, APA is, could be the representative of that, that thing. It collect all things. We can respond to their, their active promotion. Uh, to engagement to the our the APA. That is uh, one of the things. Uh, yes, if uh, in one element, maybe sometimes they cannot handle the, the industry. So, uh, yeah, it can work together. Okay. Let's park the program side of things. Um, we'll go to the second part, which is the event committee. Um, yeah. Liana, how are we looking for, Yeah, you know, we've got APAN 57 locked in. How are we looking for future meetings? So we have got proposal from um, Pakistan and Hong Kong for 58. Um, so Hong Kong has requested for uh, a bit of time till early September. Pakistan has already submitted their proposal. Um, Hong Kong needs to take it up to their steering committee. So um, then we will have to bring it up to the program committee to evaluate. That is 58. 59 is Japan. Um, 60 is Waken. 61 is Bangladesh. 62, we have opened it up uh, and proposed to New Zealand. Um, if uh, Amber is up to it, then we'll probably have to already start announcing it that 62 might be in New Zealand to give people ample of time, but it's open. So 60 and 62 is open right now. Yeah. So, but if, if um, Pakistan takes 58, most likely Hong Kong might take 60. So it's between both. Yeah. Um... Just coming before the APAN, my management was interested to take the APAN 58. Uh, they have decided that uh, we are uh, likely to host uh, APAN 58 in Islamabad. Uh, the proposed dates, uh, Vakas has shared yesterday of early September because uh, about the he was worried about uh, the weather conditions. September is a little better. But uh, Leonan told us that it should be six months before the next APAN. So we have sent the revised proposal of the fourth week of August. That will be, uh, I think, 23rd to 27th August of uh, uh, 2024. So we propose that dates in uh, for a pan 58. Excellent. Francis, does that kind of align with academic years? This is like typically how we've adjusted the, just the last week in August, kind of fit a lot of people's academic this, program? This one is okay, but I have to go and check. Um, sorry. I, I think it might be a bit late. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually we try to keep it in the early part of August because otherwise it, a number of us academics uh, will be impacted. 
you know. So if, if you can, you can make it in early August. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. The only thing is we are considering is always the weather condition. Uh, okay. I we believe that the as far as we delay that August it more uh, become more suitable uh, for the participant. Otherwise, the whole August is uh, not an issue for organizing the pan. Uh, it, it may be revised, but uh, we believe that uh, the end of August is maybe light more better than the it's early good. August. Not cooler. No, you cannot say cooler because this is a warm humidity is very high or something like that. This is about the only the weather thing that we are taking care of. Otherwise, it's it's uh, it's up to. <laughs> it's, it's weather is okay for you guys. Then we have no have issue. What is the weather it's like uh, here is it's equivalent to uh, we say is May or April in Pakistan. It's much much hotter than this. It's currently in Sri Lanka. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the only issue. This is very close to the beach. That's why you cannot see the temperature. Yes, this is uh, <laughs> But so, sorry, if you are in the same latitude, right? It, it's, it's, I mean, very pretty for August, better be early because academics haven't started yet. Then, then, then it's, it's easier. But, uh, I, I mean, the, the climate, um, it's also another issue because we also have friends who are coming in from the US and, and elsewhere and Australia, uh, Australians. Okay, they, yeah. yeah, I don't know. They some of them are in the deserts. <laughs> yeah. Um. What 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 do you feel, um, Torin? I mean, your input is critical. We have to invite during that time. Actually, I prefer always prefer for the odd one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, because of hot and it's absolutely humid. So you will be keep on sweating. Nobody likes it. Not only hot. Mm. But inside the building, most of the time. Kamak then it is fine. Kamak is surrounded by the it's, uh, it's something that the uh, whole night is, is cooler than the day. But still, it is just hot. I, I, I do not like it, but it is hot. Uh, compared to the cities of Pakistan, it is cooler, but Hmm. Maybe we need an APAN siesta in the middle of the day. <laughs> Morning sessions and late afternoon sessions. We yeah. we have evening sessions. That would be yeah. good. Yeah. good. It will be totally now hotel, so uh, I believe there's no impact that we can turn our band into conference. Um, Andrew, can I suggest, given that Pakistan is really keen and has a reasonably fixed kind of date in mind, subject to negotiating with Francis, of course. Um, the, the which week of August is fine. Um, I'm just wondering whether we should ask Liana to maybe have a chat to the Hong Kong people and see if they're really, really, really desperate to have 58, or if they're happy just to let 58 go through and then approach 60. Because if it's going to take them another five, six weeks to decide, um, we're, we're down to less than 12 months. So we've run about 15, 20 minutes over time. Um, thank you all for the, the very great discussion um, and, and for your input uh, and for your participation in the program committee as the APAN caravan rolls on and on. So uh, with that, unless anyone has anything else, um, let's uh, draw this to a close and break for lunch. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Andrew. Bye.